Okay, we back again. Sorry it took so long, uh, but it is what it is, life. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with this class. We're going to continue on the covenants. Now, the first covenant that we put together for you was on the salt covenant, showing the importance of salt. Now we're going to get into blood covenant. And this is the, this is the big one right here. We got to pay attention to everything that happens. Now, we're not going to jump right into it because we're going to show you the different covenants that was made throughout time uh, with the different patriarchs, starting with, with uh, Adam. You have an Edenic covenant. You had a covenant of Adam. You got, I mean, a covenant of Noah. I mean, we're going to go through all of these so you understand. Then we're going to give you the tools so that you can recognize when a covenant is being made. But these covenants, uh, there are, you have some that's conditional, they have conditions attached to them, and you have some that's unconditional. Like, uh, I'll give you an example before we get there, like Noah, the, the uh, covenant he had with Noah was unconditional, see? So we gotta understand these things, and then he's gonna make it plain about the covenant. And then this is all he talks about, is his covenant, his statutes, his judgments, and the commandments which are the law, which, which we call the law, All right? And we're gonna show you a lot of things with this. So I'm hoping you guys go through each one of these lessons for those that uh, go through all the lessons. Please make sure that you understand this because this, again, I'm always trying to show you guys when it comes to the Mashiach because everything in this book is about him, but we really gotta understand this because this, this word covenant, it, it can make or break salvation for all of us. So we all need to keep this in mind. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Abba, who will we come before you, Father, as always? Always asking for forgiveness, Father, because you know that this flesh that we're in is wicked. And we ask, Father, that you just forgive us for our sins, transgressions, and iniquities. We ask that you help us, Father. Give us the mind to want to stay on the path. And even if we fall, Father, please, Father, pick us up and dust us all, Father, so we can keep walking. Because we need this thing as we see the days getting closer, and they are getting closer because people seem like they have just lost their minds. But these demons are, they're, they're hard at work. And when, when they are released and that pit is open, it's gonna be really out of control, but it's not gonna get any better. It's gonna keep getting worse. And we know this, Father, because your word told us this. But at the same time, Father, we have to understand who we are supposed to be worshiping. We have to understand who you are because you are everything. You give life to everything. So without you, Father, we know there is nothing. So we ask these things, Father. And, and we always, Father, thank you for the ultimate love gift, Yahuwah, Yahusha HaMashiach. And we also thank you for the Ruach HaKodesh because with her teachings, Father, I mean, her guidance, that's a wonderful gift that you sent from above, Father, and we need it. And we need to do the right thing so she will always wanna be in our presence. So again, Father, we just ask that you touch the minds of those that's listening, open their eyes so that they can get some understanding. And we ask these things in Yahusha HaMashiach's name, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this thing there. All right. All right, let's 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 get this, let's get to this thing here real quick. I'm just trying to double check my work because I got to do that. All right. Okay, now uh let's see. Okay, so this is the beginning, part one, covenants unconditional and conditional. Part one. So we got to look at who's behind everything. We got to look at, you know, we got to give the Father all esteem. A lot of us have been trained to worship uh, Yahusha, or the one they call Jesus. No, 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 no. We're going to show you exactly what's going on with this and what he had to say about it, right? So let's go ahead and get started with this. Now, who can be in a covenant with Yah? Isaiah 56 and six, and 6 says, also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to Yahuwah to serve him and to love the name of Yahuwah to be his servant. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take it hold of my covenant. But this was already prophesied. So, I mean, we already know he's coming back to get Israel. 
but whoever else, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of my covenant. We know the covenant is the Ten Commandments. When he's talking like this, we know what it is. Isaiah 56 and 7, even them, who everyone will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer because the Father's house is where everybody wants to be. That's where everything comes from. We're going to show you that. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called house of prayer for all people. What does he mean, all people? Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of, of his covenant. That's who he's going to bring to his, to, his, to his holy mount. That's who that's what he got rooms in his house for. See, we got to, we're going to see this. All right. Okay. Let's keep rolling. Now, the word Brit is Strong's number H1285 in a sense of cutting, right? So you're going to see when something is cut and blood is shed that it's usually a covenant being made, right? But the word covenant also means what? A, a, alliance, a pledge, right? This is what the Brit is. Constitution, ordinance, and monarchs to subjects. So a monarch is speaking to his subject. A king is speaking, an emperor, a ruler is speaking to his subjects. Who is his subjects? Those that take hold of the covenant. Now, alliance of friendship. So we saw that salt well, it was a sign of friendship, but when you keep his covenant, he's looking at you like you're his friend, right? And we're gonna see even Abraham. That's why he was called the friend of Elohim. Number two, covenant, divine ordinance with signs or pledges. Because when you make a covenant with him, it's a pledge. And when you do this, it's so, this book is going to come alive to you because now the Ruach is going to be with you. All right? So let's, let's break this word Brit down. Okay, so we see the word Brit, right? That's, that's just the basic Hebrew, right? So Bet, Resh, Yod. And the top, right? So the best tells us the house, the house head or the prince, the head of the household, who is the king prince, and he is the strong arm of the father, right? And he's also going to be a power offering. This is where the word, this is what the word brick breaks down to, right? Bet rest yod in the top all day long. So let's keep rolling. Now to shuva. It's a Hebrew word for to turn from the way you were going and return to Elohim for healing, forgiveness, and instruction in righteousness. So this is who we get this from, Yahuwah. He gives us the instruction in righteousness, not a pastor, not a man, not a woman. Whenever you got a question about something, you know, if, if you got an elder, ask him. All he's all he really supposed to do is take you straight to the scriptures. Because the scriptures are supposed to answer everything. People talking, and then next thing you know, they have their feelings attached to it. Or I mean, what they feel. We, ain't, we, we don't never go by what we feel. We go by what the Father says we're supposed to feel. We go by what the Father says and try to execute what he's telling us to do. All right? Now, Matthew 12 and 50. For whosoever, see, he just said everyone, but now... Here's a Mashiach come and tell you so for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in the Shamayin in the heaven, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. Why would he say that? Because he's trying to show us that in these times that's coming up, we're not going to be able to depend on anybody but him. We're not going to be able to depend on our, our, our kinfolk because kinfolk will get you straight in the lake of fire. So he says for whosoever shall do, it's Greek word number 4160. It's to make, bring forth, to commit themselves, to cause, cause to do what? Cause to work, right? Show, uh, bear, you know, you're carrying something, keep and fulfill. So that's what we need to do. We need to bring ourselves to the Father, commit ourselves to Him, do the work that He put in, in front of us, which is His covenant, right? Right? His, his statutes and judgments attached to that, attached to the 10. We're going to show you that. We need to keep his words and fulfill them and to make ready or to prepare. So we, so by us doing this, we're getting prepared for the wedding feast of the lamb. See, By us doing this, 
we're work with like right now we're practicing the righteous acts that's going to get us where we want to be at that wedding because because a lot of us like i said i showed you another know, class and some of us going to be killed for this thing so you're going to have to be filled with the spirit you're going to have to prepare some of us going to get out in the wilderness the place of safety and we're going to get killed out there because guess what we're not used to walking in the commandments and out there one false move you're going to know that he's real because he's going to because you, you're going to be killed I can read that to you. See the rebels, those that rebel against this thing, he's gonna kill them. So either way, I mean, either you're gonna walk with this thing or you're not. And for those that don't, if you can't reach them, then they have no hope because all of us is gonna meet the creator in the end. When it's all said and done, we all gonna do that. So we need to keep these things in mind because when we can go through uh, the, uh, prophets and the prophets is showing you all this craziness and telling you how the world is going to be turned upside down and it's right in your face i mean we're looking at shelves in the grocery stores you know i mean they're empty you know and stuff is not I mean it's all this stuff is by design but the kings of the earth don't even understand that they're doing the father's will without even knowing it. they're doing it for wickedness because they're trying to get you conditioned now they're talking about giving out another stimulus, see? Because, I mean, the more you stay at home, I mean, they like, they love this stuff. They love the chaos. So if you're not ready for it and you don't, you're not going through the prophets and seeing what's going to happen, then you're not going to know and you're going to get caught off guard because you didn't make ready and you didn't prepare yourself. It's just that simple. Like I always say, it's just that simple. All right, let's keep going. The will. Right, whoever does the will of my father, the desire, the pleasure. This is what it, it's, it's his. It's the father's desire, and it gives him pleasure whenever. I mean, we he's pleased with us whenever we do the things that we need to do. All right. So the will, the word will, is, is G number twenty three oh seven. Thelema, desire, pleasure. What one wishes or has to determine shall be done. But then, who, who wishes that we keep his will? The father. Mashiach is, is going to be, you know, we're we going to see this all over the place. Or has the, I mean, so th that, that's what it boils down to. The father wishes you, and he's determined that if you do these things, in, in other words, he's determined what should be done. And the things that's supposed to be done is the commandments, the precepts, purpose, decree. See, that's his will. It's the commandments. Number that, this is a, one of the first entries, precepts, purpose, and his decree. His decree is, a, is an edut because it comes out of his mouth, right? And he, and he shows these things, his will to the son and the son came and, and teaches us in the flesh and actually does his will perfectly for our example. Now let's look at this word, this first word, commands. A command or a commandment is Strong's number 6680, right? The, from the Hebrew word sava to command, appoint, ordain of divine act. See, so when he, when, he, when he gives you a commandment, then usually it's a divine act that's, that's, that's attached to it. What is the divine act? That, that means the commandments. It's always about the commandments. And I know a lot of times people don't want to keep hearing that, but this whole book is, is about this. I'm sorry. There's no, I mean, there's, I mean, even if we, I mean, and we're going to go to prophecy, you're going to see the same thing. So command from the Brown Drivers Briggs lexicon means to give orders. Exodus 7 and 2, thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron and thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh that he send the children of Israel out of his, out of his land. So they, whether he's giving them orders and telling them what they need to be doing, and, and so he's appointing them to do a certain thing. They went and they did it, right? He ordained them to do it, right? He gave them a command. To, to, and then what did they do? They end up carrying out the divine act because they were obedient. And this is the thing, a lot of us struggle with this, with this obedience, but you gotta have it. You gotta be disciplined with this thing. It's like if you was an athlete or something that you really wanted in your life and you went after it full force until you got it. This, is, this has to be even stronger than that. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go look at a precept. A precept is Strong's number 86490, right? It's, uh, 21 times precept, it means commandment. Two times, it means a statute, right? To pay attention to, observe. 
So when he's saying about his precepts, he wants you, these are his commandments and his statutes, right? That he wants you to observe, to pay attention to, give heed. This is what Brown's Robert Briggs likes, because I, like, I like to use that too. Strong, I mean, strong is okay, but then Brown Driver's Briggs lexicon always gets right to the point. Give heed and attention. So kind of the same thing, observing and giving heed. But when somebody tells you to pay heed to something, you need to do that. Psalms 119 and 4, thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. So he, 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 has, he has given us a divine order to keep his commandments diligently. Just like when you wanted that car. Just like when you wanted to make the football team, just like wherever, you know, when you wanted to be a nurse, you know, or some, some people wanted to be a doctor. They, they went to school for 12 years, 10 years, eight years. They was diligent. You got to be diligent. Otherwise, you ain't going to get that license. So this is the same thing we have to do. But we have to give heed to him more, right? Because we didn't, get, we didn't come on this earth to, to get a job and make money. We came on this earth to either serve him or house of time. There is no other way around it because if you are not serving him, you are enemy to him. And we're going to show you that. We got a class on the Mashiach coming up and we're going to go through all of that. So let's keep going. A statues is Strong's number H202708. Gucha, right? Statue, ordinance, custom, appointed, manners, and rights, right? Just Yesenius Hebrew uh, Chaldee lexicon. It's an everlasting law. Because as you see around here, we use a lot of different sources. And the thing about it, like I always tell you, a lot of these things are free. If you don't have any money, y'all still make sure some kind of way, if you really want to study and get this thing, you can. Genesis 26 and 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. All right there. And we know he made covenants with him, right? So, I mean, here's Abraham before Moses was even born doing the same thing. So this has nothing to do with Mount Sinai. This has everything to do with the Melchizedek order that was passed down. So the word obeyed is H number 8085, to be regarded, hear, listen, pay attention, agree, to be obeyed. And I mean, this class is not just for y'all. This class is for me, too. Please believe me, because I ain't no better than nobody else. I got my faults, and I got things I need to be working on right now, just like everybody else. Only you know what they are. And so, please, I just, I'm just i begging you, hear and listen what, what, the, what these words are saying to you. Pay attention to them. Agree to do them and obey. This is how you're going to stay in covenant with the Father. There is no other way. All right. Psalms 119 and 68. David said, I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. So this is now you know what a precept is, right? It's, it's real easy once you get once you get to understand it. He, so he's telling him, I have kept your commandments. I paid attention to them. I observed them. I gave heed. Right? But David was a man. So he slipped, but he went through his, he went through what he had to go through. Boom. He came back strong. And on top of that, he's going to be in, in the wilderness. He's going to be out there too. <laughs> and he's going to be a king in, uh, uh, in the new kingdom. So even if we make mistakes, I mean, we still can bounce back, but we got to want to do it. And we got to, I mean, we got to do a lot of hard work because a lot of times when we start, especially when he's, he's freed us for some of these devils that's on us, and then you go ahead and Start that same foolishness again. The process got to start all over again. So this time, now is what the scriptures say. I mean, the spirits come back. They they, they come back seven times stronger. So they bring in, they bringing folks back with them to, to go ahead and get right back up in you. Now you got to deal with your thoughts. Now you got to fight yourself. I mean, it's, and he gonna and the things is gonna keep passing in front of your face. See, so once we get free, we need to learn how to stay free. And the only thing that's going to help us be free from his grip is this, is these commandments, period, and obedience. Now, Psalms 119 and 68, again, I have kept that precepts and that testimony for all my ways out before thee. I did that. So I want you guys to understand that. This is when we pray, we want to be able to say this to the Father. Yahoo asked this question, Isaiah 28, 9. So whom shall he teach knowledge? 
And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that I wean from the milk, that's when you first start out, and draw them from the breast. Well, whose breast? His breast. I'm not saying this. You can't look at this like he's a woman. You got to look at it like he has the information. This is just a way he's trying to show the people this. Why? Because they was farmers, right? And they and so right away, you know, when he says something like this, you're a farmer, you got cows, you watch them feed on their mothers. I mean, all animals do this, all, all mammals. Then what did Paul tell you about the milk of the word? So you got to have the milk before you can eat strong meat. That's how you're going to understand the doctrine. And you got to do the steps that he's given you to do so that you can receive the doctrine. And the doctrine is going to make sense. And you got the Ruach to help you understand the doctrine. It's his doctrine. There is no other doctrine. All these other doctrines are man-made. That's what they feel. But that can't help you. How can they get understanding? Let's go to Romans 10 and chapter 10 and 14. Romans 10 and 14. But see, for you to get understanding, you got to have somebody to help you. Right? Uh, let's see. 10 and 14. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Because before you started doing these classes, some of y'all, I mean, you had a, a, a some type, you was going to church or you had some type of idea of the most high, but you ain't really know him. And you didn't really believe. How? Because you wasn't obedient to his doctrine. Right? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they, they, they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good tidings uh, of, good, of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah said, uh, sovereign who has believed our report. So everybody don't believe this report we put out. And your pastors, if, if you don't have a pastor that's teaching you this, you're in the wrong place. See, Isaiah 28 and 10 says, for precept must be upon precept. This is how you're going to get this. When they tell you, oh, we've been told in the past, you know, oh, you don't need the Old Testament, just stay in the New Testament. Well, then how are you going to get the precept upon precept? Precept upon precept, line upon line, actually reading this thing, right? Line upon line. Hear a little, you got to you, you gotta go precept upon precept in the Old Testament and there and hear a little, right? Line upon line and then and there a little. You got to go back to the New Testament, line upon line. You got to read both of the books is what he's trying to tell you. This is how you're going to understand what he, his doctrine is. Because if you just start out reading this New Testament and don't read the Old, then it's, we are, we are, if you've been following this class, you're going to see it's a whole lot that you don't, that you've been missing, right? Why? Because, but the sons of Adam say this is what this is what some of these people are teaching us, right? Teaching our people and others, right? Teaching the strangers, get the same thing because they try to have some time trying to kill everybody. He just got a special hatred for Israel. Now let's go here, Isaiah twenty-eight and fifteen. This is what this, this is what the sons of Adam are saying. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come to us. So no, look, 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 Yahoo, no matter what you do, it's not going to bother us. For we have made lies our refuge because they don't believe. See, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And this is what people is doing. And when you try to go and talk to them and give them some understanding, they don't want to, they don't even want to hear it, but they don't understand that they've, they, that they've made a covenant with death. Why? Because as long as you're not walking in, in the Father's will, what you're doing is you're under the law of sin and death. Really, you're a criminal. That's how he's looking at you, like a criminal, because you're rebelling against him. And anybody knows that knows anything about monarchy, you cannot do that. If you rebel against the monarch, it will be death. So the father in his infinite mercy, because he know how crazy people, his, his, his creation is, and how influenced by how Satan they are, in Isaiah 28 and 16, therefore thus says Ab Yahuwah, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. And that scripture right there alone should tell you why this congregation is called what? Sons of the stone. Okay, let's move on. 
do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in my in Elohim, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And this is what he told the apostles, and it, and it, and it works for us too. But he's telling you, you know the way, because I don't gave you the way. The Father sent me here to show you the way. See? So as long as you understand the way, you've been watching these classes, you know the way. It just comes down to execution. Let's keep going. Now, Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27, he said, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. So you cannot get to the, the Son, right? You cannot know the Son unless the Father reveals them to you. Neither nor if any man the father save the son, and he to, and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. So if you've been coming up to these in these classes, the father trying to show you something, you got to take advantage of it. This is true of the Mashiach, whether in spirit form as Yahuwah Elohim or fleshly form, Yahusha HaMashiach. See, because they work together and they're in each other, and he wants us to be in within in what? In covenant. We're gonna show that to you. See, this includes the power to create. Behold, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means Elohim with us, right? Isaiah 9 and 6 says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given and the government will, government will be upon his shoulders and he will be called the wonderful counselor, mighty Elohim, everlasting father, prince of peace. Does that mean he's the father? No. He's the only father that we've ever that we've ever known. He's the only Elohim that we ever have heard or that we have history of him being here because he was sent by the father's will. So he has these titles too. So he so we know he is Yahuwah Elohim and we know he is the creator because the father has given him all things. We just read that. All things was given to him. So that he can he can do everything that he's ever done, create, kill, you know, because this is the same uh, 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 Elohim that was in the wilderness dealing with Israel, and he was putting. And this is that's what I say. People don't they, they keep saying you know they want to call him Jesus because they don't they they refuse to try to learn about his name. We're gonna see how important that is later, and then this is the same one that was in the spirit before he came in the flesh. Knocking people, killing people, putting plagues on Israel, doing all kinds of things to other nations. This is the same one. And that's what people got to understand. But see, we've been so filled with these fairy tales, man. I mean, these, I mean, that we, we just got done reading, folks is hiding up under the up, up, up on the lies. And some people just gonna stay there. And I mean, sometimes you just gotta let it, you just gotta let it be what it is. You pray for them, but that's all you can really do. The Mashiach came in the flesh to set all things straight and teach the commandments of his father and set the people free from the traditions of the Pharisees' doctrine. Kind of like today, people are lost in traditions and don't understand the father or his will. It's just that simple. Because traditions are killing folks, man. See, they don't understand the father's will. But we, but we learning about this. Now, Matthew 7 and 21, not everyone that says unto me, sovereign, sovereign, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven, right? So, so when we look at the word, uh, he that do, or he that does, or doeth, or does, we, we're going to use Stayer's Greek lexicon, right? For the word doeth, it's G number 4100, to think, to be true to be persuaded of. That's why Paul said, let every man be persuaded in his own mind, to credit, place confidence in. This is what we have to do if we wanna enter the kingdom. We gotta, we gotta think it that this is true. We gotta think that the, uh, 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 we gotta be persuaded in our own mind, right? And we have to place confidence in the father and the son. This is, this is a, this a facts. But you got to do it the way they're telling you to do it, not the way you, you feel like doing or the way you want to do it. Now, John 5 and 46, for if you believe Moses 
you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? What is he trying to tell you? I'm the one that gave Moses this in the first place. I wrote him with my own finger. Everything that he told you, he got from me. So now I'm in the flesh, I'm telling you. So when people say, man, man no, you ain't got to listen to Moses, man, well, that's old, or Moses, Lord. And trust me, they devils. Or they either, it can only be two things, either they devils or they don't know. But anytime I see a pastor or a preacher on TV and they're telling you don't do this, but then he, he'll come back and start looking up, using the lexicon to look up words, I, 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 right away, I know he a devil because there's no way he don't know this. It's impossible. You can't use a lexicon to break certain things down. And you, uh, 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 I mean, because I know when I first picked up a lexicon and I started seeing the power of it, man, I started going through all kinds of stuff trying to see what this word meant and that word and was trying to get to the bottom of this. Uh, uh, uh. So if they're telling you this, leave. I'm telling you, it might be, it's going to be hard because some of y'all love these, these men and these women so much. But I mean, what happens if you if you, you you go this way and you're not following the father's will and his doctrine, you mess around getting a car accident, you die. This person sees where he was wrong and he get it right. See, he going to be in the kingdom. Where are you going to be? So we can't go by what people tell us. We have to go by facts, what is written. Now, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. You ain't got to be in darkness. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them in the last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his commandment leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. See, so you got to understand this, because he's going to be there and that, and that last and on that judgment. I mean, she ain't going to be sitting on the throne as well, looking at you. He's going to be the judge over the whole thing. And then you're going to have what? You're going to have the apostles. They're going to be judging the children of Israel. So you got to, you got to, I mean, he's telling you this. And, he, and then he's even showing you that the father is the one that's in control, not him. He's speaking what was given to him. And he's warning you. This is a warning. Let's keep rolling. The will of the father is that we keep his commandments as Moses had told us from the covenant at Sinai given by Yahusha himself. In the spirit form, nothing has changed. All his creation understands this, but one man who is too wise for his own good. Let's show and prove this. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. See, this is what we got to understand because we're going to have these tests, right? We're going to have these tests. And we got to understand that we got to be ready for this. All right, in the beginning, Elohim created the, the Shamayin and the earth, and the earth was without form and, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. We know that's the Ruach, right? And Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. So he, everything he's saying, to, he said to the light, okay, come on, light, uh, come into existence. The light, yes, master, boom, falls into existence. And Elohim saw that the light, that it was good. Why? Because he made it, right? Now, they're going, when we get into the dietary law, I mean, he's he going to tell you that all these animals is good. Why? Because he made them. But they all is made to do something. Like this light was made to, 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 to appear and be. This is, what, this is what he's trying to say. Not that you can eat it, but we haven't gotten to that yet. We're going to get to that real soon. And Elohim saw that the light was good, and Elohim divided the light from the darkness. See, because in the beginning... You, and when if you have any a little bit of understanding, you would understand that this is after the Great War. Everything was out in chaos. This is where the word tohu bohu comes from, right? But now he done he done separated the darkness at, from everything that Hasatan and his minions was doing. Boom! Now he's creating. Now it's light. And Elohim, uh, I'm sorry. And verse five. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. In other classes, we showed you what this is. But guess what? The firmament said, yes, master. 
And Elohim made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. So just, uh, like, uh, just like any mason running around to my as above, so below. Okay, whatever. But it's that, that that's kind of right. See, so let's keep going. And Elohim called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning was the second day. And Elohim said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. So the waters heard what he said and they gathered in one place because everything is alive, whether you know it or not. And then even in the Proverbs, I think of the Psalms, he tells you that, you know, that the, uh, he, he made a boundary for the, for, the, for the ocean. It can only, only supposed to come as far as he tell it. That's why you, and you, and you have the moon that, that's working in conjunction with everything. So the tide goes out and the tide comes in. But what do you think happened when it's a tsunami? This is something that he sends the messengers to do. Because other than that, the ocean ain't going to, it's not going to, it's going to go by what his perfect will is going to follow the father's will, no matter what. And it's been doing that for thousands of years. See? Now, and Elohim called the dry land earth and gathering together of the waters called he seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. Why? Because he made it. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. So, okay, the grass start growing, the herbs is growing. I mean, everything that he's creating is he's, he's giving them a commandment to do something. They obey his will and they do it. And the herb brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was the third day. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so, okay. And Elohim made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, which we know is the sun and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also, right? And so they have a path that they follow. And Enoch is called a circuit. They have chambers that they come in and out, but they obey him. They stay on, on course. They stay on the path. They do not break it. And you can go to the book of Enoch and it tell you that one of the stars disobeyed him. You get a chance, go Google that and see what he did to the star. See, everything by his word is in course. Just the way he set it up, the way he told them to do it, that's what they do. The only one that don't understand uh, out of all his creation is man. Watch the birds. How do you know winter's coming? The birds fly south. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. It's incredible, right? The flowers, they die. He tells them, come back in the spring. Boom, here they come. You start seeing them peeking up out of that flower pile. And in your yard, you see the little buds coming up. Everything obeys his word. Everything obeys him. But man, verse 17, and Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. But we know they do. The sun shines every day, sunshine outside. And then when, uh, 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 when the moon goes through its cycles, guess what? When the full moon, She's shining down on the earth. You go outside in the full moon, you really don't even need no street light. You was in the woods, you could see your way perfectly. I know this because I've done it. And Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was a fourth day. And, and, and Elohim said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament. So everything is doing what he said. And Elohim created great wells and every living creature that moved, which is which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply on the earth. And the evening and the morning was the fifth day. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, creeping thing, beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And Elohim made the beasts of the, uh, of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And Elohim saw that was good. So if you just, I mean, me, I like to watch a lot of nature shows. 
because I like to see the handiwork of the creator. And I've studied these different things because I'd be looking at the insect. You know, it, it just, it's, it's amazing how everything knows it's born with it, with, with the, uh, the, I mean, with the understanding that Yahuwah gives it and it carries out what it was made to do. That's what, that's what it does this whole lifetime. Only one that has a problem with this is the man. Unfortunate. Let's keep going. John 14 and 5. Thomas said to him, Sovereign, we don't know where you are going. So how can we say, how can we know the way? I'm just piggybacking off this other thing. He told him they know the way. So now he understands because we, we already know that Thomas, he ain't never really believe anything anyway. So Yahuwah answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip says, Sovereign, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Yahushua answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. He's telling you in a whole nother place again. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. That's the Ruach HaKodesh. Remember, she's part of the Elohim. That's wisdom. And what was he, and what we're going to see later on, he was filled with the Spirit. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. See, that's how you can, that's how you can really tell. Verily, truly, I tell you, whosoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do what's, whatever you ask in my name. So and we, and that's, that's why it's important for us to know his name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, but what are these works, and how do we do them? If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, which is the spirit of truth, which we know is the Ruach. The world cannot accept her. I'm just saying that because, I mean, you know, again, we know these scholars. We went through, If you went through the class on, the, on, the, on the, what they call the Holy Spirit, which is the Ruach, then you would understand that. Because so the, so the scholars all over all these other books, all these other apocryphic books, all in the Old Testament, right? They saying her. Then you get here, and then these folks then came and said him, because it neither sees her or nor knows her. But you know her, for he, for she lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world would not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. Because he he's the one that's going to have to see. And that's the other thing people don't understand. The father raised the Mashiach up. He's the one that's either going to raise you up on that first resurrection or leave you there and see you uh, when he's on that throne. On that day, you will realize that I am in my father and you are in me. I am in you. Whosoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. Because remember, he's just repeating what the father is saying. So when he said, if you love me, keep my commandments, he's telling you what the Father is saying, the will of the Father. So whoever has my commandments and keep them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. So this is what people got to understand. This is not the Mashiach. I mean, even though he gave the commandments at, at Mount Sinai, the father, he was doing the father's will at that time too. So he's telling you, this is what the father is telling him to tell you. Now, the will of Ab Yahuwah. Let's look at the will of the master. What is it? Webster Dictionary defines the word will as a faculty of conscience and especially of deliberate action. It is the power of control that the mind has over its own actions. The will is that which gives directions to all our facilities. Think about it. When Yahuwah wills a thing, this is his faculty of, delib of deliberate action. His will embodies his power and his spirit. And if we know anything of Ab Yahuwah and his will, we understand that his will always triumphs over all other wills. Now, the Elohim that created us gave us the ability to will. When you look at a sports contest, you are watching a test. 
The team that is the better team, in other words, they prepare better, get the best foods and conditioning, is not 100% the team that wins. The team that wins is a team that is hungry enough and has a greater desire and strong will enough to impose his will on the other team. The beauty of our father is that he has the power to enforce his will and impose his will on all his creation. He does not impose his will on us. He gently suggests to us what his will is and he asks us as the created to submit to his will and for us to let his will become our will. Let's go to John chapter six. This is what he's, he ain't gonna force it on you because he gave you free will. He gave you free will. That's where that comes from. You can do you can do your will if you want to, but I would I mean we starting to learn that you want to find out what the Father's will is. Let's go to John chapter six. We can read verse thirty eight and forty six. All right, here we go. Now, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him that sent me. And this is the will of the Father which has sent me, that of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have the everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Right? So this is what we got to look at. The Jews then murmured, right, the house of Judah, at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from the Shammai. And they said, is not this Yahusha, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I came down from the Shamayim? Yahusha therefore answered and said unto them, murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of Elohim. We're going to see that. Every man, therefore, that have heard and have learned of the Father cometh up, up unto me. Not that any man have seen the Father, save he which is of Elohim. He have seen the Father. So we got to understand that. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me have everlasting life. I am the bread of life. So we got to understand that. We got to go to the Mashiach. We got to go through him. Because him and the Father are in each other. And we're going to see what that means. If, you, if, you, uh, if you've been up here on these classes, you already know what that means. If his will becomes our will, then his spirit becomes our spirit and his way becomes our way. This is what he's looking for. Then we are ikad or we are one and, and at peace with him and all his creation. Submission to his will brings about much blessing, but the greatest blessing of all in submitting to the will of Ab Yahuwah is that we enter peace and covenant with him. Think about that. Now, when you are at peace with him, you won't be at peace with family, friends, job, and especially this world. Now comes the test of wills. Are you ready for that? There are some terrible days ahead of us. The test is coming. Will you prevail? Will you do his will to the death if need be? Questions to ask yourself. These are questions that you need to ask yourself. How do we know his will? Through study of his word and his creation. As Paul said, the things of Yahuwah are clearly seen. Let's go to Romans chapter one. I don't know what I did on that one, but y'all know sometimes I do crazy stuff. Plus I ain't perfect, so. I do try to give my best though. I always do that. Romans 1, 18 through 20. And he said, for the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Because this is what's been happening to us. A lot of these people that they haven't, they was not sent and they was not real teachers. So, but they hold the truth and unrighteousness because that which may be known of Elohim is manifested in them for Elohim has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. See, we're supposed to, this, we're supposed to understand. Even the eternal power in Godhead so that they are without excuse. So it's going to be an ugly time. Because Paul is telling you this. Because we showed you in other lessons. Paul said he definitely does all the will of the Father. So the only true way to serve him is by doing his will and being in covenant with him. And he has given us instruction on how this is achieved, but it's up to you to do the research it, see it, accept it, 
and be strong willed enough to do it. That's the bottom line. So that people call me a lot. We talk about different things and you know, we, we go, we talk about some of the things that we are going through or some of the things that's hard for us to deal with. But this is the bottom line, right? He, he gave us the instructions on how we at how we supposed to achieve his will. So it's up to us to do the research, to see it, accept it, and be strong willed enough to do it. So some things we have to let go sometimes. If that's whatever's holding you back, sometimes you got to let it go. It's not an easy thing to do, right? All right, now let's look at this. As in uh, John 6 and 45, it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of Elohim. Every man, therefore, that have heard and that have learned of the Father comes unto me. And we see this a lot. My Father is the only true Elohim. No, our church says you and the Spirit are God too. See? But they don't understand what the God means, and they don't understand Elohim. Because he is uh, I mean, he did. He was well. Elo, I mean, he was um, Emmanuel, Elohim with us. But they got they, they're confused with this thing, right? Uh, watch this here. Historically, many of our early American church forefathers, those who helped establish churches, most known as oneness, apostolic churches, all use this scripture, John ten and thirty. Let's go there and look at it. And. Got this information here. I can't remember. I meant to cite it, but uh, I forgot. But it, it was pretty good, and it, and it kind of caught my eye. So I said, "Man, let me go ahead and, and put this down here." Uh, John ten and thirty, and it says, "I and my Father are one." See, so this is why, uh, or they'll go to. I think it's First John, uh, and uh, they'll say, "You know, there are three that bear record in heaven: the, the Word, the Father. You know, and they're, that they're one." See, right? Well, see. That's the Trinity. No, 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 no. That's not what it means. He already, we know by now the word Akkad means one. They, are, they got the same mindset. All right? In an attempt to support the understanding and teaching at that time that Yahushua was Ab, Yahushua, uh, Ab, Ab Yahuwah, a problem, however, immediately arises. How do we explain Elohim as being his own son and Yahushua as being his own father? If, as they claim, the son and the father were literally one and the same Elohim. Today, we have more information available to us than they had and are more knowledgeable in the translation and transliteration of these early writings. So that's why for the translation and transliteration, this is why we use these interlinears. Depending on the scripture, one often means unity. Yahushua was one with the father, not because Yahushua was the almighty father of spirits himself, but because he had the spirit of Ab Yahuwah, the father dwelling in him. I speak not of myself, but the father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. We just got done reading that, right? Now we can go to 2 Corinthians. Let's go, let's go do this here. 2 Corinthians. I was trying to show you a few things, but I like this article. That's why I put it up here for y'all. And... Uh, let me see. What are they saying? Uh -uh. Did I did I miss that? Yeah, I missed that one. Okay, I mean, I should have took that one out. I don't know what I don't know what I was thinking about with that. Huh? Okay. Anyway, that's that's not right because there is no. Oh, this is. Well, hold on a minute, man. I'm tripping. I Me, mean, I know what time is. Two twenty six. Hee hee hee. I'm sorry, y'all. 2 Corinthians, I know I thought I'd try to go behind this thing for a couple of days and make sure everything uh, is right. To wit, the Elohim was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation, which we know is, is Yahusha, and we know is these words that's on this book. The correct understanding is Yahusha and his father were united in covenant by Ab Yahuwah's spirit having one purpose, which was to save fallen Israel and mankind, and were in one, uh, were in one accord. This was possible because of Yahusha perfectly submitted will. Yahusha surrendered his human will to the will of his father, Ab Yahuwah. Now, Luke 22, 41 through 44, and he, Yahusha, was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. 
And there appeared a uh, messenger unto him from the Shamayim, strengthening him, right? Because he ministering to him, because that's what, when you minister to somebody, that's what you do. You, you're not, they not, uh, I, I can read to you that your pastor should not be a Lord over you. He's supposed to be ministering to you. And being in, in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, grape drops of blood falling down to the ground. So why is he saying that? Because now he knows that the, the, that the blood is getting ready to be shed, which is going to confirm the covenant. Our marriages, two bodies shall be one. Our churches, although many members, we are all of one body in the a, in a, in a Mashiach. You can, there's a scriptures for if you want to go back and check that. Our purposes are having the same resolve, counsel, consent, etc. One mind, one purpose, one will. First Peter 3 and 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, that you may be, may, that you may, uh, Romans 15 and 6, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify Ab Yahuwah, even the Father of our sovereign, Yahushua HaMashiach. That's who you're supposed to be thanking. That's who you're supposed to be giving the praise to, not to the Mashiach. I'm sorry. But I know when I was going to the Holiness Church, that's why we said, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, praising Jesus all day long. And then uh, half the people don't even understand the Father. That's why we're doing this part, because you never know who's going to come up here. All right? Now, Yada praise Yahuwah. What is his name, and what is his son name? If, if, me, if you know it, right? I have come in my father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. I know when I was going to the Israel of God, we was told that, uh, uh, that uh, the father's name was Jesus. <laughs> Where they came up with that, I do not. Even when I was going there then, and 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 and, and the uh, elder said that, I just looked. I was like, wait a minute, that don't sound. I was looking around, people's faces was like, wait a minute, where are you getting this from? But that's just somebody that wants to hold on to the uh, Greek name of Yahusha. That's what they. So that's what they do. But if you don't know any better, some people believe everything that's told to them. Now, the time to unite with the Elohim is now, because we're going to be stronger together. And in these, these days uh, down the road, we definitely going to need the Father, we're going to need Yahusha, and we're going to need each other. See? It's going to come down to that. Now, Yashra'al, he who rules with El. Because we can show you other places where he surnamed us. Huh? We were surnamed Yashra'al. All right, let's keep moving. See, but that's why we got to be united. And then he's just showing you that he's using this to show you about the two houses, how he's going to bring them back together. All right. You must honor the son to honor the father. Let's go to John chapter five. And we're going to hit chat verse 23. John chapter five. This might be a little long today, so I, I don't care. It just is what it is. I mean, I always say that, but then I look at the time, it's only like an hour and 30 minutes or something like that. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. It says that all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honors not the son, honors not the father, which have sent him. So he ain't telling you to oh, oh, worship him. He's saying honor him. Verily, verily, I, you, I mean, he gave the commandment to honor your mother and your father. You see what I'm saying? Are you worshiping them? No. So that's not what the Mashiach is telling you to worship. And verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death, the law of sin and death, to life, which you get from the commandments. Just, it's just, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not really a hard thing. We just have to look at these things. I, I would like to read the rest of this, but I'm not. You can do that on your own time. Now, let's go to John chapter 12. But I would advise you to do that. Uh, uh, John 12 and 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. And if any man serve me, him will my father honor. See? My father ain't worshiping you. He just pleased with you. See? This is this is what's going on because Yahoo and so... And so we say, why? Because Yahushua was slain before the foundation of the earth. This is why he had this power. And that's a whole nother story. And we can't get into that. But I had to put that there. Let's go to Revelation 13. Just got to see this stuff for what it is, man. Brothers and sisters, our beloved, 
You gotta see this stuff, man, for what it is. All right. Revelation 13 and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the, in the book of life of the land slain from the foundations of the world. And there's a couple places we can go at. But they're going to fall down and they're going to bow down because every name going to bow down before the name of Yahusha, right? Because you got Yahu, you got the Father, Yahuwah, Ab Yahuwah's name there, and Sha means Yah saves. Real simple. Uh, let's go to John 10 and 17. Real simple. Whenever you get ready to get tempted, man, just fight it off. And if it keeps happening, you got sometimes you might have to, sometimes you got to kick things to the curb. Therefore, does my father love me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down on myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received from my father. See, so he's he giving him straight honor. Why? Because he did everything he was supposed to do the right way. He never wavered, never. I mean, she act with no joke. And there's other places when you start using these interlinears, you'll find out that he was the greatest everything. I don't care what it is. He was the greatest everything. I mean, the strongest prophet, the strongest teacher, the strong, I mean, shit just goes on and on. So this is why we do these type of classes because we got to get you prepped up so when we start looking at these, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to 2 Corinthians 5 and 19. We got to get you prepped up. Let me do that already. I think we did. Oh, no, I'm sorry. To wit that Elohim was in Christ because he, he was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. See, the Father is using Christ to bring the world to himself, not imputing it. Yeah, we read this already. Uh, them and have committed us toward the word of reconciliation. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 1, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 3, so this is 3 through 4, but this is the whole thing about this, uh, Ephesians 3, 1, 3 through 4, because he's trying to bring us all back to him, That all those that want to come, right, Ephesians 1, verse 3 through 4, blessed be the Elohim and father of our sovereign, Yahushua HaMashiach who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in the Mashiach. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Okay, so that means that we was chosen to get this word from the foundation of the world. That's why you up here. That's why on the Sabbath day, you're doing the right thing. On the feast day is coming up. You're going to be there too. See, because you was chosen from the foundation of the world. And he said, he's not going to lose one of us. But if you choose to be, if you will to be lost, then that's what's going to happen to you. See, that's why you're hearing this. Otherwise, most people, man, I ain't got time for that. Oh, I'm going to get it together. They, they can't hear the call. Right? They can't hear the call. Let's go a little further. John 10 and 36 says, Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified, that he has set him apart and sent into the world, thou blasphemies, because I said I am a son of Ab Yahuwah. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Here he goes again. So we see this word in, right? Uh, let's go to John chapter 14. I'm going to give y'all a better thing. It just means all together give self to give yourself holy, submit. That's what it, that's what it, that's what it's all about. And the Mashiach did that. So why he's getting all these rewards? That's why he's getting his, he got his inheritance. We're trying to get our inheritance. John 14, 10 through 11. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison, and his head was brought. I mean, how am I doing? Um, yeah, I don't know where that came from. But anyway. And I, I don't know. I don't know what I did with that. I'm sorry. Ah, just wait a minute. Hold on. Man. Oh, yeah, it's early in the morning. I'm up here in Matthew. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Man, I got a little bit to do with age. Some of y'all is like, oh, you know, y'all real good with stuff. Wait till you hit them 60s. That's going to start leaving. John 14, uh, 10 through 11. Oh, let's see. Believe thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. 
Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. So we see right here, it just means that they all together and he gave himself wholly to the Father. So the Father and the Son are in covenant. And this is what we got to understand. Let's see, John 10 and 30. Now, let's see. Uh, I am a, I and my father are one. So we're going back to that same scripture. So what he means is they're all together, right? They're in covenant, right? Father and the son are in covenant. One is G number 1520. And, two, uh, he, and so what I did was I used, I showed you this guy just before. Sometimes when you find some of these words and you can't, and it's kind of, they don't make sense in the, in the new, in the Greek, because we, again, we know this Greek thing, what's going on with that. You got, you use the New Testament Greek to Hebrew dictionary. This is what I like to use by Jeff Benner. And it actually gives me, it converts the Greek number into a Hebrew number. And it just means a cod, a unit within the whole, a unified group. So they one unit, they, they, it's like military stuff. They move as one unit because the commander is telling you you need to go attack this building. Okay, then, okay, first platoon, you're gonna go ahead, this is, this is what y'all gonna do. All right, they do a sand table, they put everything out, because they, they go in, we go and scout it out, draw everything out, make a sand table so we can look down on it in 3D and see exactly what we're gonna do. Each one of us has a job to do. See, so we are a card, we are our one unit. See, a whole, a unified group. This is what he's after. This is why I said up here, stronger together, right? Okay, hold on a minute. And I don't got into the lesson. Y'all let me get into the lesson and yeah, I'm gonna give it to y'all like this. All right, I ain't gonna re-record it. Yahusha is Elohim, right? Mighty, El Mighty Elohim, everlasting father, right? Isaiah 9 and 6, we got that from that. Yahoo is Elohim, John 5 and 18. They both want to be in covenant with us. John 17 and 21. Okay. You got to understand these things. <laughs> it's not a hard thing. Let's go to John 17 and 21. All right. We're going to get we're going to get through this. Uh, but I wanted to point out something to you in this 17th chapter. Boy, this is we're going we, to get to this prayer, but especially verse 17. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So we already know what the word truth is. That's how you separate yourself. Right. Now I said 17 and 21, that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So they want to be in covenant with us, Ab Yahuwah and the Elohim and whosoever you are, whoever wants to come, whoever can hear this. So what, this, is what it's, this is what it's telling you, all right? All right, let's keep rolling. So this is a really important class, so I'm not... I'm going to try to give it all I can. We must submit to see the kingdom, right? And look at this brother here. All right. He got the word of Yahuwah stamped in his forehead. You definitely want to do that. So you don't want, you don't want the, uh, the mark to be stamped there, right? And we can show you different scriptures where Yahuwah went and marked the people that he loved. We're going to show you that later. And everybody else, he said, kill him. And this was the one that they call yeah, I mean, the son of man in, in the spirit before he became Emmanuel. So I don't know why they keep trying to make him all sweet and cuddly, because he really is not. He just, he just came like a lamb this time because he had to be the sacrifice. But then again, when we go into the prophets, when he comes back this next time, he coming like a lion. He coming to tear up something. But again, the sons of Adam say, man, we ain't got to worry about that. Now. Let's look at this Enoch chapter 52. Judgments of the kings and the mighty blessedness of the righteous. And thus Yahuwah commanded the kings and the mighty and he exalted and those who dwell on the earth and said, open your eyes and lift up your horns if you are able to recognize the elect one. And the, and the sovereign of spirits seated him on the throne of his glory. And the spirit of righteousness was poured out upon him. And the word of his mouth slays all sinners, because he's going to do that. That, 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 that double-edged sword is going to come out of his mouth. And all the unrighteous are destroyed be from before his face. And there shall stand up in that day all the kings and the mighty, 
and the exalted and those who hold the earth. See, so this is why we got to stop trying to get rich and stop trying to, I mean, trying to be like these stars and these athletes and all this, because he's going to destroy it. And they shall see and recognize how he sits on the throne of his glory and righteousness is judged before him. And no lying word is spoken before him. So you ain't going to be, I mean, Paul warns you, there ain't no excuse. So you're not going to be able to talk your way out of this. Then shall pain come upon them as a woman in travail, as she has pain in bringing forth. When her child enters the mouth of the womb, and she has pain bringing forth. And one portion of them shall look on the other, and they shall be terrified. Because now it's like it's real. And they shall be downcast of countenance, so their facing is going to be sad. And pain shall seize them. When they see that the son of man sitting on the throne of his glory and the kings and the mighty and all who possess the earth shall, uh, let's, uh, I can't see, from the, from, for, from the beginning of uh, the son of man was hidden and the most high reserved him in the presence of his might and revealed him to the elect and the congregation of the elect and, and uh, holy shall be sown. And all the elect shall stand before him on that day. So you want to be this elect. How are you going to be this elect? By doing the will of the Father. And all the kings and mighty and are exalted and those who rule the earth shall fall down before him on their face and worship and set their hope upon the Son of Man and petition him and supplicate for mercy at his hand. They're going to be trying to plead. Nevertheless, the sovereign of spirits will so press them that they shall hastily go forth from his presence. And their faces shall be filled with shame, and the darkness grow deeper on their faces. And he will deliver them to the, the, the messengers for punishment, to execute vengeance on them because they have oppressed his children and his elect. And you can see how wicked these men are and some of the things that they're doing on this earth. I watched something on, um, uh, I watched something, and I want you all to pay attention because I'll just please stop reading. I watched this, uh, I watched the history on the, um, on that Oxycontin and I couldn't believe it. These people knew, these, these kings of the earth knew that this stuff was killing people and just turning a world upside down. They targeted the working communities in America with this stuff and they knew it was wrong. And, and the FDA, that's why I don't believe nothing. The people said, well, this Food and Drug Administration, they crooked. They was, they had people on their payroll. I mean, the senators and, and governors was on their payroll. This is why this is what Yahoo is trying to show us. So we can't worry about these things on the earth. We got to be reaching for the for for uh, uh, pressing forward to the mark to execute vengeance on them because they have oppressed his children, the elect, and they shall be a spectacle for the righteous and for his elect, and they shall rejoice over them because the wrath of the sovereign of spirits rested upon them, and his sword is drunk with their blood. And the righteous and the elect shall be saved on that day. So people that are saying, I'm saved, nah, nah, on that day. What did Enoch tell you? Shall be saved on that day. And they shall never thenceforward see the face of the sinners and unrighteous. Because you're going to be in the lake of fire. And the sovereign of spirits will abide over them. And with that son of man, they shall eat and lie down and rise up forever and ever. Because we know that's the Mashiach. And the righteous and the elect shall have risen from the earth and cease to be uh, a down a downcast countenance. Now it keeps going, and it talks about the garments of life given to each and every uh, very elect uh, servant. And we're going to see later on the reason why he gave us these white garments is because this is it, it's in, back in the day when they, uh, when we're going to show you this the exchange of garments always pointed toward a covenant. So we're going to show you David and Jonathan did this. Now let's keep going. Now, okay, so we see here's a Mashiach with his crown, and he, and then hopefully, because everybody in white, they get your white garment, hopefully, you getting your crown. Let's go to Matthew 25 and 34. <laughs> yeah, that's why this is so important. That's why this is so important. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, prepare for you uh, from the foundation of the world. Because we just got done telling you, you was already chosen from the foundation of the world. So this is what he's telling you. See, 
And there's a whole lot of places I can go. Job 19, if you want to, might want to write these down. Psalms 15, Job 19, 25, uh, uh, Job 14 and 14, Revelation 21. All right, so let's look at this. Romans 8. Romans 8. I said, please don't believe that Brother Saul don't have his issues. I, I do. I really do. And sometimes I get caught up in stuff and I be like, man, how did I get here again? I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be knowing my elder. I'm supposed to know better than this. All right. Yeah, uh, Romans uh, 8, 14 through 17. For as many as live by the spirit of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. Because guess what? The spirit is in them. She's ruling them. She's showing them. She's guiding them. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again into fear, because we know that's what Hasatan do, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So we cry out to the Father, please hear us, remember us, we want to be adopted. We want to be sons of the Elohim. We want to be the elect. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Elohim. See, and if, the, and if children, then heirs, heirs of Elohim, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with them, that we may be glorified together. So some of these things we got to overcome, it's, it's going to cause pain to some of us. Because Brother Saul like to drink. And every now and then I still trick myself. You know, I'm, I got to be a little bit of wine. It ain't nothing. I ain't getting drunk. Before I know it, I'm like, I'm in there. And I'm like, man, I got to, I mean... <laughs> It just is what it is, y'all. And I'm just saying this to you so you can understand this, man. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm saying this to you so that you will understand this. You can't get, uh oh, I'm sorry. You can't get, you know, it's none of it. We all going to do things. We all going to make mistakes. The problem comes in if you just keep willfully sinning. Because you know, like I know when I'm doing something wrong. I know it. Now, the, the thing is, do I, do I still do it? That's the heart. That's why Paul said some of the things I shouldn't be doing, I find myself doing them. Paul was going through some stuff too now. And you're going you're gonna to go through some stuff while you're in this. But sooner or later, you got to say, no, I can't do this. No. Right? Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the sovereign, the righteous judge shall give me at that day. Now, that's 2 Timothy 4 and 8. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. So we, we see another scripture where he's saying, you got to do this diligence. You got to do this work. You got to. You got to be diligent. Okay, I can't keep doing this. So guess what? I tell you what, I just ain't going to drink no more. I ain't, I ain't having nothing to drink. I don't care what it is. Um, Passover, I have me a little shot of wine and let it go. See, that's one of my problems with my flesh. Because I love that. I love, oh, whiskey, good whiskey. Man, that's right up my alley. The thing is, I can't do like, like most people. Because, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a glass of wine or a shot. I can show you that, too. Especially during the feast time. But you ain't supposed to get slithered. And I'm one of them that if I drink one drink, I'm going to keep drinking. That's just, I mean, I had that problem before I came in this thing. And that's, you know, don't please believe it's still in my flesh. It's still there. Because that's what my flesh like to do. Revelations 3 and 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before the messengers. So this is so that's the white raiment we're looking for because again, when you get that white raiment, that is an exchange of garments that's showing you that the covenant is boom. Now everything is getting ready to be put in your mind, so you ain't got to worry about tripping no more. Then he even gonna have, Enoch tells us that he's gonna have a fountain that you a fountain of wisdom that you can go drink out of it to, to get better understanding. See? Now, Enoch chapter uh, 81, you must choose a father and learn to do his will through his anointed one to become an heir. You want to go to Enoch chapter 81 and read that. I, I would I would just I would almost tell you it's necessary. Can you overcome? Now this is what you got to ask yourself. Can you be a faithful son or daughter? Let's go to Revelation 21. Revelations 21 and 7. 
He that overcomes shall inherit all things that I will be uh, his Elohim and he shall be my son. See, but now let's, let's, let's I should have said verse eight too, but the fearful, you scared to go ahead and, and do the father's will because man, what am I gonna do about my job? And, what about my family? What about my husband? What about my wife? Man, my cousin, my, my grandmother, man, she a pastor. She ain't gonna, she ain't trying to hear this. But the fearful, unbelieving, those are the ones that ain't trying to do the will, and the abominable, that's they just they just doing all kinds of stuff. They don't even care about the father. And murderers, right? Because all these is pointing toward what? It's pointing toward the commandments and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Boom. It's just right there. It's just right there. So if you're one of these things, and, and even I, for some of y'all, I would take my, my interlinear, the Strong's or the Brown Driver's Briggs or whatever kind of lexicon you got and go and look up these words. You're going to be like, wait a minute, what? A lot of this stuff ain't what you think it is. So that's a good homework assignment for some of y'all, right? All right, let's keep rolling. Now, 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Because okay, he said he got crown, a crown laid up for you, but he got more than that. These are the crowns you're looking for. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. 1 Corinthians 9 and 25. And every man that strives for the master is tempered in all things. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Because some of these, I didn't, I didn't write them out all the way because I didn't have room. Because I wanted to read them. <laughs> I wanted to read them. So this is what I'm going after. I made up my mind. Me and uh, uh, my, one of my um, nephews was talking about this. I mean, he got things he going through too. But I mean, we just said we're gonna just we're gonna do what we got to do, and uh, and see if we can put this together. We're gonna we just gonna give y'all. We're gonna submit all the way. All I mean, with all our might. All right. Now, First Corinthians nine to twenty five. And every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So we're looking for an incorruptible crown. And they see their crown is they they, they doing it. They live in they live in delicious and all this. But we already seen that he's gonna see gonna smash them up. They go into the lake of fire. But the crown, these crowns, it ain't they ain't going nowhere. That's forever. James 1 and 12. Blessed is a man that endures. Let's get there. Let's go to James. Let's go to James 1 and 12. All right. Let's see. Blessed is man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the sovereign has promised to them that love him. How do we know you love him? Because if they love me, you're going to keep my commandments. This is another crown. All right. Let's go to 1 Peter. Let's go to First Peter now. First Peter five and two through four. I don't know what I did on that, but I can I see maybe it might look right to y'all, but it's not right to me. First Peter five, two through four. Feed the flock of Elohim, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, uh-oh, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over Elohim's heritage. See, so all this pastor and, uh, and rabbi and, and father and all this, mm -mm. they ain't supposed to be put on no pedestal. Their job is to teach you and minister to you. Because let's, let's we'll see what he says. Neither as being lords over Elohim's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So bam, he's showing you, bam, another, another crown. <laughs> Revelation 2. Let's go there. Yeah, you probably didn't even know you had all these crowns coming, huh? Yeah, but you do. For none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation 10 days but be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So he, he just, I mean, it's, it's all over this book. These are the different crowns. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm, I, want, I want these. Now, Zechariah 9 to 16. And Yahuwah the Elohim shall save them in that day as a flock of his people. We just got to understand how the master shepherd going to come. For they shall be as the stones of a crown. 
lifted up as an ensign upon his head. Malachi 3 and 17, and they shall be mine, says Yahuwah of hosts. And that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spare of his own son that serves him. So that's his own son and daughter. How can you get some of this? Don't you want some of this? I know I do. Let's see how you get some of this. Malachi 3 and 16, then they that feared Yahuwah spake often one to another. They ain't in the, in the barbershop talking about no football players. They talking about Yahuwah. And Yahuwah, he hear, he's, he's hearkened, he's heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear Yahuwah and that thought upon his name. So it's a book of remembrance. You definitely want you. You want them crowns, you better get that name in that book. Malachi 3 and 18, then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth Elohim and to him that serveth him not. This is all about doing his will. So we got to understand this. While we're going through this, this first, Revelation 3 and 11, behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So he's telling you, be careful. Don't let nobody take these crowns from you. Be diligent about this thing. And this is what we got to do. And this is what me and my nephew was talking about tonight. We said, man, you know what? We're going to get ourselves so diligent, folks ain't going to be able to stand us. See? That's what we got to do. Because please believe me, I, I teach y'all, but I be, man, I be wondering about myself a whole lot. I want to get in this kingdom. I don't want to be like Paul said, teach y'all, and then I end up being a castaway. Uh-uh. I want to get in, I want to get in this thing too. Let's keep rolling. Now, we must learn obedience through Mashiach to receive the gift of eternal life. There's no exceptions to this. And like my man said, they say get rich or die trying. I say keep the commandments of doctrine, and that's the attitude that we got to have. Just that simple. The kings of the earth and all these other folks, this is what they, they trying to get rich or doctrine. We supposed to be trying to keep these commandments of doctrine, basically. Now, you must be immersed and understand covenant to enter his rest, right? The kingdom and be in the father. So you want to be in the father so you can get in his kingdom? Hey. You got to understand these covenants. We're going to get to it. Trust me. We're going to get to the meat now. Now, we must be baptized in the name of our Yahuwah and Yahusha and of the Ruach to be in covenant. Now, let's look at something. Now, this is going, this, now I want you to think about this when I get ready to read this. Matthew 28 and 18. Then Yahusha came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, right? Because he said, whosoever, anyone who does this, right? All people, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Now, some of y'all, when y'all got baptized, they said, I'm baptizing you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the, and, the, and, the, and the Holy Spirit. So how was that? How was you baptized then? Because they ain't saying the Father's name. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He's telling you how you're supposed to do it. Being baptized them in the, or immersed in the name of the Father and the Son, in the name of the Son and of the Holy or the Ruach HaKodesh and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's something y'all need to think about because some of us have been baptized in, uh, in swimming pools or they got the, the, the little pool thing. <laughs> so you ain't really doing nothing but get wet. I'm sorry. I mean, it's just the truth. But this is a very important part of this covenant because this is like an agreement between you. This is when you when this happens to you, you're telling the father, I, 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 I obey and I'm willing to submit myself 100% to you. And if you haven't been baptized and you've been doing this for a while, you got, you got to get your mind right. That, that tells me it's something else that you want to do besides this. Now. The true high priest on earth, we're going to, we're going to, uh, let me see, I've got to see how many more I got. Yeah, I kind of want to go through this. I'm sorry, y'all, if it gets to be a little bit long. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, you know what? I think this is what I'm going to do. We're going to stop right here, but I'm going to show you something real quick. Let's go to John chapter three, and we're going to come back to this the next time, but I want to show y'all this. <laughs> this is something that some people might have missed. John chapter three. Now, let's, let's look at this. Oh, 
There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Uh, is that the one I want to do? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. That's not the one. Hold on a minute. Let me see something here. Because I meant to take this one out because that's not, that doesn't go there. I'll tell you what, we're going to stop right here. But we're going to talk about John the Baptist. And I'm going to show you that he was actually uh, the true high priest. Okay? There is no doubt about that. We're going to show you that. And this is why he was the one that baptized. He was already sent from the father before he was even born. He was already ordained to do this. And we're going to prove this to you. And so, and we're also going to show you, because see, these people are doing it right. She's getting, she's getting immersed or baptized in living waters. <coughs> waters that move, like the spirit moves, not in some type of swimming pool somewhere. But we're going to stop with that. And uh, let me get out of this thing here. All right. And so I appreciate y'all for coming up here with me tonight. Uh, I'm hoping that you learned something out of this tonight. And we got some other stuff we're going to, like I said, we're going to keep it moving. Um, but I'm just telling you, we got to understand who we're dealing with. We're dealing with the Father through the Mashiach. We're supposed to be giving all the praise, all the glory, all the love, bowing down to the Father. Because he holds all the keys, right? And we got to be like the Mashiach when it comes to the Father. This is what we got to understand. So let's go ahead and pray out of this. Abiyahua, we thank you so much for all things, Father. Man, what will we do without you? We need you so much, Father, in this day and time. We ask, Father, that you keep us. We ask that you shine your face down on us, Father, and remember us. Please remember us, Father. And again, Father, keep us on the right path. <clears throat> and we ask these things in Yahusha's name. We ask that you remember everybody that came up here to the class or that's going to come to the class. We ask, Father, that you touch others so that they can put each other on other people that they know. Take the fear out of them. Because like we, we just got done reading, the fearful, we can't be fearful. We have to spread this gospel. This is what you gave it to us to do to learn of you and tell others of you. Speak of you often, Father, so that we can be Jews in your crown and that our name can go in the book of remembrance because we definitely want to have that. We thank you, Ab Yahuwah, for all things. And we ask these things, Father, to shine your face on us and remember us, please, Father. In Yahushua HaMashiach's mighty name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, y'all, so we're going to catch up with y'all next time. Uh, shalom, shalom.